G'day you rascals, it's me Danny from Danny Paints and in today's video I'm going to show you how I paint Black Templars. Let's get into it. Just before we start, here's a list of all the paints and stuff I used in this video for you to screenshot. I'll also put a list in the description below. I find it helps enormously to go into every project with a plan. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at plans. Fortunately, it doesn't have to be a good plan, so the entire plan I came up with for this video goes something like this. Kinda grim dark, but not really, but kinda black templars that are like fighting and crusading over like a junk trash planet that's really hazy and is polluted and has been fought over for centuries. Even something as happy-go-lucky and as loose as that is really gonna help you. Evaluating every choice you make in terms of whether or not it's going to assist you in getting towards that final goal is super valuable and it's going to save you a bunch of time. Usually I like to zenithal prime my minis to get a better idea of the light volumes and direction, but in this case, because so much of the mini is going to be black, I just left it at the Chaos Black Spray. We're going to start with the Ceramite Power Armor and on my palette I have black, white, a neutral grey and a warm brown. The brown is there to tint my highlights with a little bit of warmth to suggest the whole, you know, hazy trash planet story. These are the paints I used here. Yeah. I make a pretty dark mix of brown and black and start loosely blocking in highlights. The best bit about Space Marines is that you don't need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to light placement. There is figuratively millions of videos and tutorials on painting them, so just find one you like and straight up copy it. In fact, I almost never paint without some sort of reference. I find them super useful. I then add touches of gray and or white to taste to lighten and desaturate my highlights. Of course, covering only a smaller area. If I make a mark or two that I don't like, the previous mix is right there on the palette to fix it up. And if you want your highlights smoother than mine, you can go in with glazes to soften those transitions. I keep working like this, progressively adding more white until I get the look I'm going for. For me in this project, that's a pretty dull and non-reflective highlight, which is another step closer to my goal of a dusty, dirty, trash planet desert vibe thing. While I'm working on the armor, I take the opportunity to add a few little edge highlights, scratches and dints with my lightest highlight color for the same reason. I tend to lean towards a messy realism in terms of light placement with those edge highlights, only putting them in the places I think are really gonna catch the light. You'll also notice my brushwork is at different points, a mix of a whole bunch of different techniques, stippling, edge highlighting, glazing, layering, you name it. Feel free to use any techniques that get you the effect you want. The more you experiment and learn, the wider variety of things become possible. And if you want a video on any one specific technique, let me know and I'll chuck it in the pipeline. For this video, I'm predominantly using a stippling kind of effect, just because the finish it gives is kind of rough and blotchy and adds to the whole messy style I'm going for. I'm not wildly happy with this so far. For one, it's kind of hard to tell against the satin black of the rest of the mini, but I think it's leaning a little too far towards brown. And so I go in and turn it down with some black glazes. Your thumbnail is ideal for testing the opacity of a glaze. While I have the glaze on my palette, I take the opportunity to add more scratches and then glaze some of them down too. This gives the impression that not all the scratches and scuffs happened at the same time. Some are from previous battles, some potentially are from years ago. For the pauldrons and tabard, I'm starting from an ochre kind of tan-ish color and have a bone and an ivory on the palette as well. White's already on there, as always. These are the paints I used here. A couple of thin coats of the tan ochre color and then I'm ready to start building up the light volumes. For this, I really dig the patchy, uneven nature of the base coat. Once the highlights are stippled on, it helps suggest a worn, faded and uneven old plate of armor and I concentrate fairly heavily on just the most exposed areas of the pauldrons, as if they've been bleached by years of sun and acrid atmosphere of my junk planet. You gotta keep that end goal in sight. For the tabard, I use less stippling and more brush strokes to convey a sense of the textile nature of the material. I went with the same brown already on my palette for the belt, just darkened a little with a touch of black. Couple of coats, and then I simultaneously weather and highlight the belt in a similar way as I did the armor adding scratches and scuffs as both visual interest and tonal difference. First, just with the plain brown, and then adding successive amounts of ivory. Onto the weapons, get your paints out. I want this cute little fella to have a grim dark mood about him, while sticking to the iconic and quite striking classic Black Templar scheme. So I start off with a deeper red than I might usually. Couple of coats, and then onto the patchy stippled highlights we're getting used to in this video. Make sure to only concentrate these where the sun and the light is actually gonna hit. The deeper your shadows, the more dramatic the mini. 
With this mini, I'm pretty tame with that, but you can go buck wild if you want. I treat these surfaces much like the armor, adding scratches and some small edge highlights in every step. I really like Wild Rider Red from Citadel for this when I'm painting red. The blade of the chainsword, I imagine to be well maintained, but also kind of swung at and through a bunch of stuff like heretics. And so I add extra marks across it to suggest that. I'm using a pretty standard set of skin tones from Citadel for the face, just because it's what I have. Please hit me up with recommendations for your favorite skin tones in the comments. I'm really keen to try out more, but I don't really know where to start. I lay down a quick coat of the Bugman's Glow and then move straight to Cadian Flesh, just leaving the darker tone in the recesses and shadows. I definitely recommend painting the head and face before you glue it onto the mini, but I'm a numpty and I thought I could get away with just painting him assembled. Meh, 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 meh. It wasn't much of a worry until I got to the left side of his face, tucked away behind armor there. Sheesh. Anyway, basically your final highlights on the face should be just on the most prominent, highest raised areas. I like to think of it as a little triangle between your forehead, nose, cheekbones, and jaw. Mm. Mm. Once I have the basic lights done on the face, I like to go back in with colored glazes to add depth and complexity to the skin tones. This, and the fact that this is the only time I'll use cold tones on this mini, mean that the face quickly becomes the focal point without really much extra effort. My favorite glazes for skin are purple and green. The purple adds a heap of depth to the shadows and really defines the cheekbones to give him this haughty kind of imperious look. And the green around the temples, cheeks, and under the bottom lip adds complexity while giving him a sallow, almost sickly look that I really vibe. The eyes on this guy are relatively simply done, as simple as eyes get, really. I go in with the white first, making a small horizontal line, and then black for the iris and pupil, aiming to make a small dot slightly closer to the top eyelid than to the bottom one. The key to eyes, which really helped me out, is cutting them in afterwards. That is to say, going back with your darker skin tone and basically painting on the eyelids, essentially. Top and bottom. It's actually crazy what a difference that makes. Before I get into the metallics, I take a few minutes to go around and tidy up, paint any small details I may have missed, and add extra visual interest to areas that look kind of boring. Like this bit. And this bit. Yeah, this bit's good. The metallics I use are Vallejo metal color. I think they're the best. And I think most of the miniature painting community thinks the same thing that I think. I think. Nowhere else have I found a metallic paint that's as easy to work with and has better coverage. They take a bit of getting used to in that they're super runny and it's important to wick off your extra paint on a towel after you've loaded the brush, but well worth it. Chestplate eagle skull thingy bit, belt buckles, weapons, super hardcore weapon chain bits that chain their weapons to their hands, what the heck? Little circle bits, backpack bits, go around and pick out all the bits you want with a steel color. And then I just go in with the silver and touch the parts that are highest and shiniest. Remembering I'm going for a dirty crusading lad covered in dust, kinda sorta grimdark, so I'm not going too hard on the shininess. I figure the weapons will be well maintained, but for the chains and chest plate, I do go back in and add a tiny touch of Typhus Corrosion texture paint to the recesses. While I'm at it with the silver, I add some fresher scratches and damage to the chainsaw just on the very edges. We're almost there. I use the same brown black ivory kind of gradient that's already on my palette for the hair, making sure to keep my final highlights extra sharp. The last bit here is just a thin glaze of the brown mixed with a touch of gray to insinuate the stubble around where he shaved the back and sides of his head. Sick cut though. And that's it. I put him on a base I've already made up and use a couple of pigment powders to just dust up his feet, tie him into the scene that I've set with the base and he's good to go, call it a day. All up, I think it took around three hours of pretty chill kind of relaxed painting. So it might not be an ideal scheme for an entire army but for a couple of special characters or even a squad, sweet. Hey, if you like this video, consider subscribing for more in the future. I don't know, it could be fun. Don't ask me, do ask me actually. If you have any comments or questions, chuck them down below. I'll be sure to answer every one of you. Cheers.